In this video, you're gonna learn all about the rubber dam, including rubber dam clamps, technique, inversion, and much, much more. I recently had the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Pop, who teaches a master course on rubber dam technique in dentistry. Today, I'm gonna to share some of the clips from that interview, which I think are gonna be really useful for you. The first topic we talked about was how to choose rubber dam clamps. A minimized set of clamps with just a few clamps that are covering all the scenarios will be more appealing for a dentist. For example, the master clamp is the main clamp that is holding the rubber dam and frame and it is attached to the anchor tooth. My favorites are clamps 12A and 13A from Coltine. They are strong clamps and also because they have serrated beaks, they have a really good grip, stability and enough strength to hold the rubber dam in tension. As a rule, you should use the clamps with a bigger beak on the buckle side, for example 12A for lower right posteriors and upper left and 13A for lower left posteriors and upper right. Next clamps I want to talk about are the additional clamps and here I'm using Brinker clamps. For the molars, clamps B1, B2 and B3. They are wingless clamps and because they are not so powerful and they are not serrated, I don't use them as master clamps. In this example I'm using 12A as a master clamp and B3 as an additional clamp and clamp number 2 on the opposite side as an anchor clamp. Please notice that the rubber sheet is held in the position by the strong 12A while B3 as an additional clamp is only exposing tooth number 30 for the delivery of the only because let's say lingual retraction was needed. So the sheet is nicely retracted to the distal by the 12A clamp and to the lingual side by clamp number 2 that we will call anchor clamp. So we have enough working space around tooth number 30. If I'm using a winged clamp, I will just place the clamp in the rubber dam in the perforated hole and then everything goes together, frame, sheet and clamp and forceps in the same time. And of course, if I'm using wingless clamp as a master clamp like I've mentioned, because I don't have the wings, I can't place the clamp in the perforated hole in the rubber sheet like I usually do. In this scenario, I'm placing the clamp directly on the tooth and then I'm gliding the rubber sheet over the clamp. So I was talking about additional clamps for posteriors. Now for anteriors, I'm using B4, B5 or B6 from the same Brinker set. One of the most popular clamps, especially on social media, is clamp B4. You can see it in a lot of posts with isolated anteriors. It looks good in the photos and it usually provides a good isolation, but the main problem is that the clamp is not so stable. Actually, B4 clamp has a quite fragile stability and it happened few times that it got hit by the suction and jumped from the margin. And if this is happening during the delivery, it's a disaster. Otherwise, before clamp is also useful to isolate premolars during the delivery protocol for ceramic veneers and crowns. However, when you need a bigger force to keep the rubber sheet in place and you want the clamp to be more stable on the margins of the preparation, an option will be to use B5 or B6, so-called the butterfly clamps. It is thicker and stronger due to the double arch, but the main problem is that when you use B5 or B6, you can only deliver one crown at a time because you can't expose two teeth in the same time. The double arch is blocking both sides. To be able to deliver two units in the same time, it is very useful to cut the clamps B5 or B6, keeping one half for each side. So you basically obtain, let's say, a more stronger B4, uh, more stable and easier to place. Because another downside of the original B4 clamp is that the arch is very small and it doesn't offer enough space for your fingers when it comes to deliver crowns or veneers. And you need this space to be able to hold the ceramic restoration in place and also clean the excess of the cement before curing. I have noticed that with this modified B5 or B6 clamp I have more space for my fingers because the distal arch is a little bit more far from the tooth comparing to B4 and it is also more stable in case you hit it by mistake. Let me introduce another clamp, I call it the anchor clamp, it is clamp number 2 from the Hygienic Colting set and I use it both in posterior and anterior isolation protocol. In the posterior protocol I am placing clamp number 2 on the opposite side, anchored on the premolar, just to gain more space by holding the rubber sheet in a more retracted position and avoid having the sheet like a curtain on the lingual or palatal side of the working area. The anchor clamp will retract the sheet and it will provide more visibility and access to work on the exposed quadrant and the reason I don't perforate the sheet for this tooth is that I might need to remove it sometimes and do suction or even place a bite block or take a periapical for endodontists and so on. In the anterior protocol, I place clamp number 2 on the first or second premolar without perforating the rubber sheet, just to gain more space by holding the rubber sheet retracted to the distal. This will provide space to work on the anteriors from the palatal aspect and again the rubber sheet will not fall like a curtain behind the palatal of the anteriors. So he talks more about clamp selection in the course. He even offers a PDF, which I store on my iPad at the office as a reference guide, and it's really incredible and easy to use. The next topic we talked about was rubber dam inversion. Rubber dam inversion 
is the key factor to obtain a perfect isolation. It is not enough that the rubber dam will just surround the tooth. It is important that the peripheral of the hole from the rubber will fold against the sulcus and it will engage between the margins of the preparation and the soft tissue, just like a retraction cord will do it in such a way that the margins will be clearly exposed. And this can also be a discouraging factor, not obtaining proper inversion and eventually the working area will get flooded with saliva in the middle of the procedure. So not only that I've dedicated a chapter in the course where I'm explaining all the ways to obtain inversion, but I am reviewing these details and all the tips and tricks all over the course and I kind of summarize it in a bonus that I've added later in the course explaining the floss ligature and how it should be handled in an ergonomic way as a forehand procedure between the dentist and the assistant to make it fast and efficient. Talking about hands, for example, I've produced a video bonus in the course where I insist on the ergonomics during rubber dam isolation. This chapter is called Hands. And I filmed this video with three synchronized cameras to show from different angles how the position of the hands is extremely important to obtain a fast and relaxed workflow. I describe every detail in positioning the hands in relation with the body posture while isolating in all scenarios. Lower posteriors, upper posteriors, upper anteriors and lower anteriors. And you will see that it is different in every situation. The hand section of the course is awesome because it's so hard to teach positioning in dentistry and positioning is so important if you're doing a difficult crown prep, let's say on tooth number 18 or 19, or you don't know how to access certain sites of the mouth. And the way he taught it for the rubber dam was pretty incredible with three different cameras. So you were able to see how he moved around his patient to get the rubber dam clamp and template on. So it was really, really, amazing okay so after we talked about that we jumped into whether to place the rubber dam on before or after tooth preparation I saw many dentists working with rubber dam but many of them are first removing the fillings and then they clean the cavities without rubber dam and only after this they will eventually continue with placing the rubber dam and let's say uh, delivering the restorations or directly restoring I'm trying as much as possible to first place the rubber dam before doing anything and here I'm mentioning again the importance of this approach in the context of reducing the risk of infections. But let's say that we live in a germ-free world and we don't care about microbial or virus contamination. Isn't it better to have the cheeks and tongue retracted and hidden under the rubber sheet to allow a good visualization of the working field and to have the gums retracted, uh, to have more light and also to protect the patient from inhaling the grinded material and small parts when removing the fillings or caries. I think that we don't need studies or do a lot of research to agree with this especially for simple restorative cases or when it comes to prep for crowns or veneers. And I'm explaining in the course why I think open rubber dam or split dam is much better in terms of retraction and protection for the patient than all the normal retractors uh, we know. I have a small chapter in the course where I'm sharing some tips and tricks to make the open dam or split dam uh, placement easy and fast. However, just as a note, I'm switching to full isolation when I deliver the restorations. You can still use the open dam if you don't have very deep margins and the shape of the soft tissue is good. But I am more confident in doing absolute isolation just to have more control on the situation. Especially if you want to deliver the restorations in a few days, the gums might be still suffering from the impression day. And if you use full isolation, you might even have bleeding gums. Uh, but if you provide the proper isolation with a proper inversion, like I've mentioned, you really don't care. You will properly expose the tooth structure and you'll be able to do the delivery relaxed without the fear of having the surface of the tooth contaminated with saliva at any time. Everything is clean, you see the prepped margins, look how nicely everything is exposed. I don't live with the fear that anytime soon the bleeding might interfere in the process. But of course when it comes to do simple composite restorations, let's say class 4, it is overkilling to do absolute isolation. So in this case, open rubber dam is ideal. Another major question I had during my interview was how to manage pain when you have the rubber dam on. Sometimes this can be really frustrating if you took the time to place the rubber dam perfectly and the patient is still having pain on the tooth that you're working on or pain where the master clamp is on or whatever. So this is what he says about that. The patient told me that she's not fully anesthetized and she's feeling pain. It would have been overkilling to remove everything and do the anesthesia and start all over again. So I've decided to administrate the anesthetic directly with the rubber dam on in the sulcus, intraligamentary anesthesia, of course slightly uh, retracting the sheet and eventually you have to remove the floss from the sulcus if you have already placed it. But if the patient is feeling pain because of the anchor clamp, I will detach the rubber dam from one corner, roll it over and place it on the opposite side to be able to have space to administrate the anesthesia. 
Then I'll just place the rubber dam in the initial position. Upper's the same, just roll over the sheet hang it on the lower corner on the opposite side and give the anesthesia. And the final major question I had was how to introduce the rubber dam to patients that maybe never experienced this type of device before. I think that's really difficult in dentistry because the rubber dam isn't as commonplace as maybe it should be or maybe it will be. So introducing the rubber dam to patients who haven't experienced it before can be a difficult task. Rubber dam can be something new and scary. And what you see now is actually a cartoon style, let's say, patients friendly video that I've created to educate the patients and to answer the most difficult questions that uh, a patient can ask regarding the rubber dam. It is very useful if the patient sees the video before the procedure so he will be more informed about the rubber dam. I actually added this video as a downloadable bonus in the course for whoever is interested in having this approach, especially with all the communication tools that um, we are lucky to have nowadays, like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger and so on. So you can just send the video to the patient before the procedure and the advantage is that he'll be uh, well informed about the rubber dam isolation. So I actually purchased Dr. Pop's course in its entirety about a year ago. And since then I have partnered with him because I think the course offers really tremendous value. And I do think it's actually really affordable for what you're getting out of it. You have lifetime value. Um, I use it as a reference guide whenever I have difficult rubber dam cases and it's just awesome. For those that are still interested on what the course offers, this is what Dr. Pop says. Definitely find more information and tips and tricks in the main course available online where uh, they will find everything structured and organized in super explanatory chapters, which are not only showing rubber dam. I'm not just placing the rubber dam and take a photo. I am presenting tons of daily war scenarios where rubber dam is in fact like, I like to say, the stage and the decor for proper restorative dentistry. The course can be attended from any device in the same way you watch Netflix, for example, and it can be accessed lifetime. It is an online platform where every dentist can comment, ask any question, and I will answer, or even if the topic requires more information, I will produce additional content that will be added in the course as a bonus for free. I really do believe that anyone that purchases this course is going to be, it's going to level up the rubber dam game. It's going to level up their clinical dentistry. Thank you for coming on to our channel to basically give a lot of free information to the people that are following. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. Thank you. I hope I wish you and your family success and happiness. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Sammy. And I really hope that uh, this video will motivate many colleagues to integrate rubber dam isolation in their daily practice, not only for better results, but also to be able to perform safer procedures that nowadays we need the most. Thanks a lot and see you online. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was valuable. I think there's a lot of lessons in this video that you can take immediately. Of course, if you want the full course, I give it my highest recommendation. So I encourage you guys to check it out and I'll see you for the next video. Thanks.